are you expecting the fucking Easter Bunny? Welcome to episode two. Strap in. We got a good one. Will I like movies? Oh, oh yes, I do. Do you like movies? Well, welcome to season two. Ho, 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 motherfuckers. Welcome to another episode of the Films with Feral podcast. The holiday edition, for those of you watching, I guess you could see that a little bit easier than hearing that, given the uh, holiday attire that we have on here today. Uh, in today's episode, we will be breaking down Jerry's top 10 Christmas movies of all time. Uh, that is right. If you don't agree with the list, screw off. Uh, we will be getting into the thick of it. These are the top 10 movies that I think anyone in their right mind needs to be watching in order to get into that full Christmas spirit. I know these 10 movies will be on display at my um, house, apartment, condo, living quarters. Uh, and they should be on at your living quarters. If you don't like what you see, how about you subscribe or you comment in the, the shit below. Uh, you can hit the subscribe button, you smash it, you follow it on the podcast. If you are listening on the podcast, I would strongly recommend uh, jumping on YouTube, if not just for this uh, this lovely birthday boy sweater uh, and the cap that we have on here today with the attire. So um, strap in, let's get after it. Jerry's top 10 ho ho holiday movies. So jumping in, at the number 10 spot is uh, a timeless classic in my own eyes. It is Jingle All the Way. That is right. You have Arnold Schwarzenegger. You have Phil Hartman. You have Sinbad. You have Turboman. What an absolute just gem of a movie. Um, you know, for those of you that haven't seen it, I don't know what you've been doing with your life. So I question that first and foremost. Uh, it is really about um, a dad doing what dads do best around Christmas time, totally forgetting what they're supposed to get their kid for Christmas. Uh, Dad, if you're watching this, I love you. I'm just joking around. I, I don't know. They, they pay me to read these things. You, you, you're awesome. I love you. Um, for everybody else, Arnold Schwarzenegger fucked up. He forgot to buy Turbo Man for his son, Jamie. So he does what any logical dad does. He goes out in the last minute, uh, charges the line, fights a mailman for the last Turbo Man, tries to go into some dark alley to try to get like a, you know, a knockoff Turbo Man. And then he jumps into a Macy's Day-ish parade and becomes Turbo Man, takes down Sinbad and gives his son a uh, Turbo Man present as Turbo Man. So basically, um, you know, what you would expect in a holiday movie, kind of, you know, similar to real life uh, in that regard. Think of why I like this movie so much. When I would be spending time with my grandparents at their house, they had this on VHS. This was probably the only VHS they actually owned that wasn't from God knows how long ago. Uh, we're talking like black and white movies and things like that. So I would just be kind of putting this in, I think religiously when I was over, ever over there and just watching it. But obviously a classic in your own right, if you don't like it, piss off, uh, it's Turbo Man. What's not to like? Number nine. So might get a little bit of flack for this one, for putting this this low in the list, but I'm actually putting A Christmas Story at number nine. It's still making the top 10. Christmas Story, not my favorite movie. Even though I am a Northeast Ohio guy, this was shot in Cleveland. Check out the leg lamp. Uh, it's got a ton of stuff attached to it. You've got the Red Rider BB gun. You've got little Ralphie in his little bunny outfit. Um, you've got the soap in the mouth. You've got the, you know, sticking your tongue to the pole. You, I mean, just boom, 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 boom. I mean, it's a ton of it. What I don't like about this is TBS decides to put this on repeat 24 hours, okay, on Christmas Day. Now, years ago, I sat down, I probably watched about four, four streams, four episodes, it, it's the movie four times, uh, watched that, and I literally, I think I, I, I don't know, I had nightmares, like just panic sweats, like I was in the movie. Uh, so I probably have to rank this movie kind of a little bit lower on the list just because it scared the shit out of me uh, because like I was in uh, the actual town or it just wasn't good. I think I was actually in the bunny outfit just walking around shooting myself. I think I didn't want to shoot myself in the eye with a BB gun after that happened. Uh, but I mean, the movie has a little bit of everything. It kind of, it's just nostalgia wise, it's there. When you think about holiday movies, it's one that's at the top of the list. Uh, it does make my top 10, but at the number nine spot. Number eight. So number eight, a little bit of speculation here too. I have The Grinch at number eight. Now, when I say The Grinch, I could be talking about 
the Jim Carrey version. I could be talking about the half hour cartoon version that gets played from time to time as well. Um, either way, I mean, you know, with my little button nose I got right here, uh, used to be told I lived in Whoville, so shout out to my Whoville residents as well. Uh, the Grinch coming in at number eight. This episode of the Films of Feral podcast is brought to you, or could be brought to you by C4. I drink enough of these, probably my heart will explode here pretty soon, so lucky for you guys, you don't have to watch anymore. Um, number seven, we're actually going with Home Alone. This could be Home Alone 1, or it could be Home Alone 2. Uh, it's not really a holiday season until you're thinking about Kevin McAllister just getting left not once or twice uh, Home Alone. Typically, when I was left Home Alone, it was on purpose. Uh, and my parents just did not reach out and I was just there and they would be praying that the sleepover bandits or the wet bandits rather would just come and uh, take me away. Uh, you've got Harry, you've got Mark, you've got the homeless guy with the fucking shovel just knocking faces in. Uh, you have a little bit of everything. I mean, this movie is a little bit kind of lower on my top 10 list because I'm still trying to figure out what the hell Kevin McAllister's dad actually did for a living. Um, he's flipping out over a bill uh, in New York for room service, but you left your kid alone on the holidays. Um, you're flying a whole family to Paris, and you live in a house like that with the lights on, but we don't really have an upgraded security system. I really don't know what's going on, but Home Alone takes the number seven spot. Number six. I want to put this movie a little bit higher. I chose not to. We are talking about the Santa Claus movie. So this could be the Santa Claus, or it could be the Santa Claus number two. Not so much about number three, but I would definitely put number two up there as a solid sequel. Uh, of course, Tim Allen playing uh, Santa Claus. You have little Spencer Breslin in this movie, in the second one at least. You have the lady from Lost in this movie. Um, in the second one, when he's trying to find Mrs. Claus, you just have a lot going on. Um, you know, you've got Tim Allen basically taking on the role of Santa Claus. Um, I, just what's not to love about that movie? I mean, it, I could just think of it like, oh, Santa's gonna need a little bit more of that cocoa. Um, that Santa Claus 2 definitely is my favorite of the Santa Clauses, but um, when I think of Christmas time, I think of Tim Allen. Uh, that is right, Buzz Lightyear. Uh, so Buzz Lightyear is my Santa Claus. Number five, I know y'all might hate this one, but fuck off. Number five, I am going with my uncle's movie. Uh, that would be Elf. Uh, that's right, for those of you following at home, Will Ferrell, my uncle. Um, not really, that's what we're going with. Maybe that'll get some more views. Um, if not, hey, worth a shot. Um, so go with Elf. I mean, Will Ferrell, take him or leave him. You might not love him as an actor. You might think he's a stupid actor that just kind of plays one role and it's just, you know, la de fucking da. Um, but it, it's just fantastic. You have James Caan, you have Zoe Deschanel, you have Will Ferrell, just to name three. Uh, and you have Will Ferrell being Buddy the Elf. I mean, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Okay, that's what we're talking about here, people. I mean, Will Ferrell wasn't meant to play the role of Buddy the Elf. It is just fantastic from start to finish. It's stupid humor, but it's great humor. It's some of my favorite humor, uh, but just an, a role that Will Ferrell was meant to play from the absolute beginning. Love you, Uncle Will. Big fan of the show. Maybe we'll have you on here one day. Probably not, uh, but yeah, top five uh, Elf, absolutely. Number four, we're getting the thick of things here, people. That's right, number four. We are going with probably one of the most classic movies of comedy, at least, uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That's right, you got Chevy Chase, Randy Quaid, just to name two outstanding people in that movie. I'm serious, Clark. All right, the movie's absolutely fantastic. You have a little bit of something for everybody. Uh, you know, the Griswolds. I mean, that's a staple in anybody's, uh, you know, Christmas house. You decorate to a fucking TA, we're going to the Griswolds house. You know, you get the biggest fucking tree possible, it's Griswolds house. And you know what? If you don't agree with me, you're a no good, far flushing, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, stuffing, ignorant, blood sucking, dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat ass, bug eyed, stiff legged, stoppy, left worm headed, sucker, shit, monkey. Something like that. I don't know. I had to look at it, but yeah, you get the point. Number three, we're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Number three, um, absolutely just star studded movie when i think of christmas movies i can this is a christmas movie obviously but it is just a fantastic movie and i am talking about four christmases give me reese witherspoon give me vince vaughn just to name two of the plethora 
of actors that are in this film. I mean, you have movie quotes out the ass. It is just, uh, I, I absolutely love it. I mean, it's coming home for the holidays, but what home are you going to? Are you going to your dad's house, your mom's house, because you know they're not married. You go to your other dad's house, or you go into your mom's house, who's also been banging and married your best friend. Um, it, it, absolutely fantastic movie, fantastic cast. I can watch this movie at any point in time and get in the Christmas spirit, but it is just that good. John Favreau's in it. I mean, it. what's not to like Robert Duvall? Come on, are you serious, Clark? No, we already did that movie the last one, okay? But Four Christmas is absolute gem of a movie. Has to top in the number three spot. Number two, we're getting into the pretty serious shit here, folks, so strap in. Uh, number two, uh, very timeless classic involving a man named George Bailey. It, it, it's just really not a Christmas season until you, you, you start watching it. it. It's a wonderful life. You have you have Jimmy Stewart in there as George Bailey. Uh, you have uh, Uncle Billy in there. Clarence is in there. Uh, Uncle Billy losing all the money. And then you, you, you have the old building alone uh, building right there. It, it's just uh, just a, a, a excellent movie. But in all reality, I mean, that, you know, take or leave the, uh, the Jeremy Storr impression. But uh, when it's a wonderful life song, you just kind of have to watch it. It's one of those old black and white movies that is just an absolute timeless classic. Before we get into the number one spot, it's a good time to recap uh, that the Films with Feral podcast is brought to you by Dougie's Dingers uh, Erectile Dysfunction Pill. Now, Dougie's Dingers, uh, the most popular man in the nudist colony, carries two cups of coffee and a dozen donuts. Let that sink in. If you would like to get your advertising on the air, please feel free to message filmswithferral at gmail.com. Uh, if you're liking what you're seeing, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, the follow button. The, uh, I don't know what other kind of buttons there are. You're pushing my button. Boom, 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 zing. Um, add us a follow at Films with Feral on Instagram. Um, you know, Films with Feral on YouTube. Check us out. Like I said, if you're on listening live on the podcast right now, check us out on, uh, on YouTube as well. We got the videos. You get to see what the hell fills up my apartment every day, but uh, check us out. Really appreciate the love. Really appreciate everybody uh, coming and supporting the messages, the texting, um, the messaging on the videos. Um, big shout out to you guys. I appreciate it. yippee ki motherfucker. That is absolutely right. Die Hard comes in at the number one spot for the best holiday movie of all time. In my opinion, it is not truly Christmas until Hans Gruber falls off of the top of Nakatomi Plaza. You have John McClane, you have Hans Gruber, you have literally everything. Ho, 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 now I have a machine gun. It takes place during a Christmas party. Literally the entire thing involves Christmas. John McClane is in fact coming home or to at least California to see his kids for the Christmas season. Die Hard is the top of the list of this top 10. If you don't like it, well, I've got news for you. I don't give a fuck. Merry 